Right, here's a quick video uh, for people who might have seen my previous video about installing an SSD, a cheap SSD in your laptop. Now, one of the drawbacks of having an SSD is to get any sort of massive uh, amount of space, you have to spend a lot of money. Um, and also, you don't necessarily need the high speed uh, space storage for things like video and um, MP3s, you know, music. So, here's an option is to get rid of that ancient antique of an optical drive and put this in instead so that you can install the hard disk that you removed or even a newer bigger one in its place and gain back some storage that uh, obviously won't be as fast as the SSD but for storing files and documents and pictures and stuff like that it will be just fine so let's get started this uh, I bought from Amazon I link it in the description um, it was very cheap, it was about six quid. So let's get stuck in. Now this is the old HP G56 you've seen before a couple of times. This is a laptop I use just for messing around with if you're wondering why I mess around with such a crappy laptop. I don't really care about this machine that much. So um, I've already done this to my XPS 15, uh, the L501X that you've seen before. And it worked a treat, so we need to get these panels off first. So let's take this. Screws out. Like that. This one is a bit stubborn. Oh, there's another screw here, that's why. Undo all the screws. There we go, so we've got that out. Now we're looking for the screw that holds the optical drive in. There should be one screw that holds it in. Let's remove the SSD quickly, see if it's underneath there. If it's not, it might be underneath the keyboard, which is a bit of a pain, because most laptops you can get to from the bottom. Um, my XPS 15 you could get to from the bottom without having to take anything else out, so. But, you never know, HP may have designed it differently. So let's take that one out. Uh, Yes, it looks like we have an optical drive screw there. So let's get that out. Better. So that's that screw out. We'll try and pull the optical drive out. Yes. You can tell usually they, they put little little legends or keys or whatever you want to call it on the um, optical drive. So here's the optical drive. Now I'm going to have to transfer some of the hardware from this drive to the new one. But to fit. Let's put that out of the way. No, this is a standard, a standard uh, laptop optical drive. Now it has to have one with the serial ATA connect, serial ATA connector that looks like that. If you have one with an older type connector, which is a, a slightly wider uh, one that isn't split in the middle, that's an IDE drive. This won't work for that because it needs to be serial ATA, as does your hard disk. That also needs to have a serial ATA connection, which. Uh, it should be in most laptops, maybe in the last 10 years or so. So let's take this out of its packaging. You get a little screwdriver as well, which is always handy. So the first thing we need to do, we need to move this little bracket from the old one to the new one. And you'll see that the holes are already in place. So we'll get our screwdriver. Undo these two screws. Put this bracket on the new one, put the screw in. Oh, I might use my uh, other screwdriver because this is a magnetic screwdriver and it works easier. Right, there we go, that's the bracket mounted. Now, you might be wondering about this uh, front panel. Now, they're fitted on in a standard mounting method, and the way to get them off is you need a small flathead screwdriver. We'll grab one of those. Now you need to transfer the uh, faceplate across from your existing drive to your new to the new caddy. So this is the new caddy and it comes with the generic one pre-installed. But to remove it, you poke a flathead screwdriver in there, and then you poke a flathead screwdriver down here, and it just comes off. So it's held on by two clips. One's mounted horizontally there, and one's mounted vertically on the end there. And that's fairly standard for uh, laptop optical drives. Now this one, ideally it needs to be open for you to be able to get into it. So, what we do is we'll just a very 
very thin pokey thing and poke it in the hole. We can't because it hasn't got one. So what we'll do instead, I'll just quickly chuck it in the laptop, chuck the battery in. button and then power it off again immediately. There we go. So you need your optical drive to be open. And the same with the uh, caddy. There's two clips that hold the, the uh, bezel in. So there's one on the side here. So you poke the screwdriver in there to release that. And there's one on the bottom here, so you poke the screwdriver in there to release that one, and off it comes. And finally, we need to install the hard drive. So, this is the drive I removed from the laptop originally. You could put a bigger one in, just drop it in, line up the connector, and slide it back. So it's mounted. There's some captive screws, uh, like um, grub screws, on the side here, so we'll just do those up, and they should. It should lock into the hard drive. Same with these. These are uh, internal. So don't undo all these all the way if you do take them out again because they'll be a pain. There we go. So that's done up. The hard disk's now locked in place. When you do these side screws up, you do need to do them up so that they are flush with the um, outer metal because we won't be able to insert the drive else and then we'll insert this into the laptop we have already peeled off the protective film and as you can see that fits nicely so we'll fit the our bezel which should just clip on there we go. once that's on it should stay stay on quite nicely and I've just noticed something <laughs> I believe That's supposed to go in first before this screw. And then we'll just reconnect our SATA cable for the SSD. Just line it up and push it down. Refit our panels. Power it on. Now the first thing you'll notice when I power this on is that there'll be a bright blue light on the side here. There it is. It does serve a purpose on this machine. It is actually flashing red and blue to show that other drivers are having activity. On the other laptop it didn't do anything. So actually that's quite useful. Right so please excuse the uh, camera on screen capture method but it's quick and easy and it's good enough to see what you're doing. So. Uh, what you need to do is prepare the prepare the disk to see uh, to to be used for data. Now there's nothing on this disk I need to keep, so I'm going to erase the disk. So make sure that if you are doing this, that uh, you um, 
have your data backed up also these instructions will depend on your machine and you need to apply a little bit of common sense and, and logic to make sure that you don't wipe your hard drive by accident um, as a precaution back up your data so as you see I right clicked on the start menu and selected command prompt with administrative privileges now the command you want to type to start with is disk part d-i-s-k-p-a-r-t and then you want to see what disks are recognized by windows so list disk and you see we have two disks uh, the, the disk zero is the ssd 120 gigabytes and disk one is the hard drive in the caddy so we want to select disk one make sure that you do select the correct disk and this is the bit where you will lose your data if you get if you've selected the wrong disk i'm going to type the word clean and what this does is it wipes the hard drive it clears the uh, partition table so after this without special software you won't be able to recover your data and there we go and then we need to create a new partition so we type in create Create partition primary. There are other types of partitions you can create with GPT and things like that. I'm just keeping it simple here. So we need to list list partition, and you see there's a little asterisk next to the partition one. It means that we have currently got that partition selected, so that's okay because we need to format it. Again, if you haven't got the correct partition selected you could potentially lose data so we'll type in format and we want to format this in the ntfs file system so we'll type in fs equals ntfs and we want to make it a quick format if you're not sure of the history of the drive i suggest not doing a quick format and doing a full format so that you can uh, be sure that there's no bad sectors um, in this case i do know the history of the drive so i'm going to do quick return And there's one final step because windows won't show this drive yet is that you need to assign it a drive letter so just type in the word assign and then you can type exit you can see that windows has recognized that there is a new drive attached So we can close our command prompt now, we just type exit again. If we go to start, file explorer. And we select this PC. We have our new empty properties hard drive so we can store all our data on there I hope this was useful feel free to ask any questions I'll try and answer them if I can um, and thanks for watching Merry Christmas cheers <laughs>